Rules for happiness, something to do, someone to love, something to hope for. You only know me as you see me, not as I actually am. We are not rich by what we possess, but by what we can do without. Three things tell a man, his eyes, his friends, and his favorite quotes. If you punish a child for being naughty, and reward him for being good, he will do right merely for the sake of the reward. And when he goes out into the world and finds that goodness is not always rewarded, nor wickedness always punished, he will grow into a man who only thinks about how he may get on in the world, and does right or wrong according as he finds advantage to himself. But a lie is a lie and in itself intrinsically evil, whether it be told with good or bad intents. Do the right thing because it is right. Science is organized knowledge. Wisdom is organized life. We can judge the heart of a man by his treatment of animals. Most men use their knowledge only under guidance from others because they lack the courage to think independently using their own reasoning abilities. It takes intellectual daring to discover the truth. Always recognize that human individuals are ends, and do not use them as means to your end. Give a man everything he wants, and at that moment everything is not everything. Genius is the ability to independently arrive at and understand concepts that would normally have to be taught by another person. There are two things that don't have to mean anything. One is music, and the other is laughter. The bad thing of war is that it makes more evil people than it can take away. Live your life as though your every act were to become a universal law. It is through good education that all the good in the world arises. All perception is colored by emotion. If justice perishes, human life on earth has lost its meaning. The question is not so much whether there is life on Mars as whether it will continue to be possible to live on earth and law a man is guilty when he violates the rights of others. In ethics he is guilty if he only thinks of doing so. Enlightenment is man's leaving his self-caused immaturity. Immaturity is the incapacity to use one's intelligence without the guidance of another. Such immaturity is self-caused if it is not caused by lack of intelligence, but by lack of determination and courage to use one's intelligence without being guided by another. Sapir Odd Have the courage to use your own intelligence. Is therefore the motto of the Enlightenment? Man's duty is to improve himself, to cultivate his mind, and, when he finds himself going astray, to bring the moral law to bear upon himself. Only the descent into the hell of self-knowledge can pave the way to godliness. The greatest human quest is to know what one must do in order to become a human being. For peace to reign on earth, humans must evolve into new beings who have learned to see the whole first. It is never too late to become reasonable and wise. Space and time are the framework within which the mind is constrained to construct its experience of reality. Two things fill the mind with ever new and increasing admiration and awe, the oftener and more steadily we reflect on them, the starry heavens above me and the moral law within me. Experience without theory is blind, but theory without experience is mere intellectual play. All our knowledge begins with the senses, proceeds then to the understanding, and ends with reason. There is nothing higher than reason. A single line in the Bible has consoled me more than all the books I ever read besides. If man makes himself a worm, he must not complain when he is trodden on. He who is cruel to animals becomes hard also in his dealings with men. We can judge the heart of a man by his treatment of animals. Feminine traits are called weaknesses. People joke about them, fools ridicule them, but reasonable persons see very well that those traits are just the tools for the management of men and for the use of men for female designs. Morality is not properly the doctrine of how we may make ourselves happy, but how we may make ourselves worthy of happiness. Heaven has given human beings three things to balance the odds of life, hope, sleep, and laughter. I shall never forget my mother, for it was she who planted and nurtured the first seeds of good within me. She opened my heart to the lasting impressions of nature, she awakened my understanding and extended my horizon and her percepts exerted an everlasting influence upon the course of my life. The hand is the visible part of the brain. There can be no doubt that all our knowledge begins with experience. Thoughts without content are empty, intuitions without concepts are blind. Always treat people as ends in themselves, never as means to an end. I had therefore to remove knowledge, in order to make room for belief. 
Democracy is necessarily despotism, as it establishes an executive power contrary to the general will, all being able to decide against one whose opinion may differ, the will of all is therefore not that of all, which is contradictory and opposite to liberty. Honesty is better than any policy. Out of the crooked timber of humanity, no straight thing was ever made. One is not rich by what one owns, but more by what one is able to do without with dignity. Laziness and cowardice explain why so many men remain under a lifelong tutelage and why it is so easy for some men to set themselves up as the guardians of all the rest. If I have a book which understands for me, a pastor who has a conscience for me, a doctor who decides my diet, I need not trouble myself. If I am willing to pay, I need not think. Others will do it for me. Two things strike me dumb, the infinite starry heavens, and the sense of right and wrong in man. Immaturity is the incapacity to use one's intelligence without the guidance of another. Perhaps a revolution can overthrow autocratic despotism and profiteering or power-grabbing oppression, but it can never truly reform a manner of thinking. Instead, new prejudices, just like the old ones they replace, will serve as a leash for the great unthinking mass. All human knowledge begins with intuitions, proceeds from thence to concepts, and ends with ideas. Every man is to be respected as an absolute end in himself, and it is a crime against the dignity that belongs to him as a human being, to use him as a mere means for some external purpose. Suicide is not abominable because God prohibits it, God prohibits it because it is abominable. Life is the faculty of spontaneous activity, the awareness that we have powers. Art is purposiveness without purpose. Happiness, though an indefinite concept, is the goal of all rational beings the busier we are, the more acutely we feel that we live, the more conscious we are of life. Humanity is at its greatest perfection in the race of the whites. If we knew that God exists, such knowledge would make morality impossible. For, if we acted morally from fear or fright, or confident of a reward, then this would not be moral. It would be enlightened selfishness. Always regard every man as an end in himself, and never use him merely as a means to your ends. I. E. Respect that each person has a life and purpose that is their own. Do not treat people as objects to be exploited. One who makes himself a worm cannot complain afterwards if people step on him. I have no knowledge of myself as I am, but merely as I appear to myself. The nice thing about living in a small town is that when you don't know what you're doing, someone else does. When I could have used a wife, I could not support one, and when I could support one, I no longer needed any reason can never prove the existence of God. Procrastination is hardly more evil than grasping impatience. Maximum individuality within maximum community there is a limit where the intellect fails and breaks down, and this limit is where the questions concerning God and free will and immortality arise. After death the soul possesses self-consciousness, otherwise, it would be the subject of spiritual death, which has already been disproved. With this self-consciousness necessarily remains personality and the consciousness of personal identity. The possession of power inevitably spoils the free use of reason. A society that is not willing to demand a life of somebody who has taken somebody else's life is simply immoral. Melancholy characterizes those with a superb sense of the sublime. Freedom can never be comprehended, nor even can insight into it be gained. Marriage is the union of two people of different sexes with a view to the mutual possession of each other's sexual attributes for the duration of their lives. I am an investigator by inclination. I feel a great thirst for knowledge. Physicians think they do a lot for a patient when they give his disease a name. Riches ennoble a man's circumstances, but not himself. Seek not the favor of the multitude, it is seldom got by honest and lawful means. But seek the testimony of few, and number not voices, but weigh them. God, freedom, and immortality are untenable in the light of pure reason. If I am to constrain you by any law, it must be one by which I am also bound. It is not God's will merely that we should be happy, but that we should make ourselves happy with men. The state of nature is not a state of peace, but war. 
No one can compel me to be happy in accordance with his conception of the welfare of others, for each may seek his happiness in whatever way he sees fit, so long as he does not infringe upon the freedom of others to pursue a similar end which can be reconciled with the freedom of everyone else within a workable general law, i.e. he must accord to others the same right as he enjoys himself. All the interests of my reason, speculative as well as practical, combine in the three following questions. 1. What can I know? 2. What ought I to do? 3. What may I hope? The greatest problem for the human species, the solution of which nature compels him to seek, is that of attaining a civil society which can administer justice universally. Religion is too important a matter to its devotees to be a subject of ridicule. If they indulge in absurdities, they are to be pitied rather than ridiculed. Beneficence is a duty. By a lie, a man. Annihilates his dignity as a man. Two things fill the mind with ever-increasing wonder and awe, the more often and the more intensely the mind of thought is drawn to them, the starry heavens above me and the moral law within me. Morality is not properly the doctrine of how we may make ourselves happy, but how we may make ourselves worthy of happiness. If we could see ourselves as we really are, we should see ourselves in a world of spiritual natures, our community which neither began at birth nor will end with the death of the body. The existence of the Bible, as a book for the people, is the greatest benefit which the human race has ever experienced. Every attempt to belittle it is a crime against humanity. If a man is often the subject of conversation, he soon becomes the subject of criticism. There is something splendid about innocence, but what is bad about it, in turn, is that it cannot protect itself very well and is easily seduced. The function of the true state is to impose the minimum restrictions and safeguard the maximum liberties of the people, and it never regards the person as a thing. One cannot avoid a certain feeling of disgust when one observes the actions of man displayed on the great stage of the world. Wisdom is manifested by individuals here and there, but the web of human history as a whole appears to be woven from folly and childish vanity, often, too, from puerile wickedness and love of destruction, with the result that at the end one is puzzled to know what idea to form of our species which prides itself so much on its advantages. The arts of speech are rhetoric and poetry. Rhetoric is the art of transacting a serious business of the understanding as if it were a free play of the imagination, poetry that of conducting a free play of the imagination as if it were a serious business of the understanding. Have the courage to use your own reason that is the motto of enlightenment. Foundations of the metaphysics of morals God put a secret art into the forces of nature so as to enable it to fashion itself out of chaos into a perfect world system. The yellow Indians do have a meager talent. The Negroes are far below them, and at the lowest point are a part of the American people. Nothing is divine but what is agreeable to reason. Fallacious and misleading arguments are most easily detected if set out in correct syllogistic form. The death of dogma is the birth of morality. Religion is the recognition of all our duties as divine commands. It is often necessary to make a decision on the basis of knowledge sufficient for action but insufficient to satisfy the intellect. The enjoyment of power inevitably corrupts the judgment of reason and perverts its liberty. Often war is waged only in order to show valor, thus an inner dignity is ascribed to war itself, and even some philosophers have praised it as an ennoblement of humanity, forgetting the pronouncement of the Greek who said, war is an evil in as much as it produces more wicked men than it takes away. Arrogance is, as it were, a solicitation on the part of one seeking honor for followers, whom he thinks he is entitled to treat with contempt. Our intellect does not draw its laws from nature, but it imposes its laws upon nature. Enlightenment is man's emergence from his self-imposed knowledge. Knowledge is the inability to use one's own understanding without another's guidance. This knowledge is self-imposed if its cause lies not in lack of understanding but in indecision and lack of courage to use one's own mind without another's guidance. Dare to know. It is not necessary that whilst I live I live happily, but it is necessary that so long as I live I should live honorably. Men will not understand that when they fulfill their duties to men, they fulfill thereby God's commandments, that they are consequently always in the service of God, as long as their actions are moral, and that it is absolutely impossible to serve God otherwise. 
philosophy stands in need of a science which shall determine the possibility, principles, and extent of human knowledge a priori. Three conditions of happiness if you have work to do, if you have someone you love, if you have hope, then you are happy now. The wish to talk to God is absurd. We cannot talk to one we cannot comprehend, and we cannot comprehend God, we can only believe in him. The ultimate destiny of the human race is the greatest moral perfection, provided that it is achieved through human freedom, whereby alone man is capable of the greatest happiness. Whereas the beautiful is limited, the sublime is limitless, so that the mind in the presence of the sublime, attempting to imagine what it cannot, has pain in the failure, but pleasure in contemplating the immensity of the attempt the desire which a man has for a woman is not directed towards her because she is a human being, but because she is a woman, that she is a human being is of no concern to the man. Only her sex is the object of his desires. Thrift is care and scruple in the spending of one's means. It is not a virtue, and it requires neither skill nor talent. Parents usually educate their children merely in such a manner that however bad the world may be, they may adapt themselves to its present conditions. But they ought to give them an education so much better than this, that a better condition of things may thereby be brought about by the future. Nature does nothing in vain, and in the use of means to her goals she is not prodigal. The trustee of the rights of other men and he must always stand in dread of having in some way violated these rights act in such a way that you treat humanity whether in your own person or in the person of any other never merely as a means to an end but always at the same time as an end human reason is by nature architectonic our knowledge springs from two fundamental sources of the mind the first is the capacity of receiving representations the second is the power of knowing an object through these representations all natural capacities of a creature are destined to evolve completely to their natural end the only thing that is good without qualification is a good will the more we come in contact with animals and observe their behavior the more we love them for we see how great is their care of the young if it were possible for us to have so deep an insight into a man's character as shown both in inner and in outer actions, that every, even the least, incentive to these actions and all external occasions which affect them were so known to us that his future conduct could be predicted with as great a certainty as the occurrence of a solar or lunar eclipse, we could nevertheless still assert that the man is free. If an offender has committed murder, he must die. In this case, no possible substitute can satisfy justice. For there is no parallel between death and even the most miserable life, so that there is no equality of crime and retribution unless the perpetrator is judicially put to death. Enthusiasm is always connected with the senses, whatever be the object that excites it. The true strength of virtue is serenity of mind, combined with a deliberate and steadfast determination to execute her laws. That is the healthful condition of the moral life. On the other hand, enthusiasm, even when excited by representations of goodness, is a brilliant but feverish glow which leaves only exhaustion and languor behind. Is it reasonable to assume a purposiveness in all the parts of nature and to deny it to the whole? Enlightenment is man's emergence from his self-incurred immaturity. Better the whole people perish than that injustice be done. Human beings are never to be treated as a means, but always as ends. Act that your principle of action might safely be made a law for the whole world. It is therefore correct to say that the senses do not err, not because they always judge rightly, but because they do not judge at all. In the mere concept of one thing it cannot be found any character of its existence. I learned to honor human beings, and I would find myself far more useless than the common laborer if I did not believe that this consideration could impart to all others a value establishing the rights of humanity. Law and freedom without violence law and violence without freedom violence without freedom and law violence with freedom and law metaphysics is a dark ocean without shores or lighthouse strewn with many a philosophic wreck. Intuition and concepts constitute the elements of all our knowledge so that neither concepts without an intuition in some way corresponding to them nor intuition without concepts can yield knowledge. Art does not want the representation of a beautiful thing, but the representation of something beautiful. The sum total of all possible knowledge of God is not possible for a human being, not even through a true revelation. But it is one of the worthiest inquiries to see how far our reason can go in the knowledge of God. 
Even a man's exact imitation of the song of the nightingale displeases us when we discover that it is a mimicry and not the nightingale. Even the song of birds, which we can bring under no musical rule, seems to have more freedom and therefore more for taste than a song of a human being which is produced in accordance with all the rules of music, for we very much sooner weary of the latter if it is repeated often and at length. Here, however, we probably confuse our participation in the mirth of a little creature that we love with the beauty of its song, for if this were exactly imitated by man it would seem to our ear quite devoid of taste. As soon as we examine suicide from the standpoint of religion, we immediately see it in its true light. We have been placed in this world under certain conditions and for specific purposes. But a suicide opposes the purpose of his creator. He arrives in the other world as one who has deserted his post. He must be looked upon as a rebel against God. God is our owner. We are his property. His providence works for our good. Even if a civil society were to be dissolved by the consent of all its members, the last murderer remaining in prison would first have to be executed, so that each has done to him what his deeds deserve and blood guilt does not cling to the people for not having insisted upon this punishment, for otherwise the people can be regarded as collaborators in his public violation of justice. An action is essentially good if the motive of the agent be good, regardless of the consequences. Laws always lose in energy what the government gains in extent. The science of mathematics presents the most brilliant example of how pure reason may successfully enlarge its domain without the aid of experience. Human reason has the peculiar fate in one species of its cognitions that it is burdened with questions which it cannot dismiss, since they are given to it as problems by the nature of reason itself, but which it also cannot answer, since they transcend every capacity of human reason. Act so that the maxim of your act could be made the principle of a universal law. Two things fill the mind with ever new and increasing admiration and awe, the oftener and more steadily we reflect on them, the starry heavens above and the moral law within. Animals. Are there merely as a means to an end? That end is man. In the kingdom of ends everything has either a price or a dignity. Whatever has a price can be replaced by something else as its equivalent. On the other hand, whatever is above all price, and therefore admits of no equivalent, has a dignity. But that which constitutes the condition under which alone something can be an end in itself does not have mere relative worth, i.e., price, but an intrinsic worth, i.e., a dignity. This spirit of freedom is expanding even where it must struggle against the external obstacles of governments that misunderstand their own function. Such governments are illuminated by the example that the existence of freedom need not give cause for the least concern regarding public order and harmony in the commonwealth. If only they refrain from inventing artifices to keep themselves in it, men will gradually raise themselves from barbarism. Human freedom is realized in the adoption of humanity as an end in itself, for the one thing that no one can be compelled to do by another is to adopt a particular end. Dash metaphysical principles of virtue Eason is given to us as a practical faculty, that is, as one that influences the will. Among all nations, through the darkest polytheism glimmers some faint sparks of monotheism. Reason should investigate its own parameters before declaring its omniscience. Beauty presents an indeterminate concept of understanding, the sublime and indeterminate concept of reason. Duty is the necessity to act out of reverence for the law. I ought never to act except in such a way that I could also will that my maxim should become a universal law. Thoughts without content are empty, intuitions without concepts are blind. The understanding can intuit nothing, the senses can think nothing. Only through their union can knowledge arise. Freedom is independence of the compulsory will of another, and in so far as it tends to exist with the freedom of all according to a universal law, it is the one soul original and born right belonging to every man in virtue of his humanity. Aristotle can be regarded as the father of logic, but his logic is too scholastic, full of subtleties, and fundamentally has not been of much value to the human understanding. It is a dialectic and an organon for the art of disputation. Apart from moral conduct, all that man thinks himself able to do in order to become acceptable to God is mere superstition and religious folly. Notion without intuition is empty, intuition without notion is blind. 
The business of philosophy is not to give rules, but to analyze the private judgments of common reason. By a lie a man throws away and, as it were, annihilates his dignity as a man. A man who himself does not believe what he tells another, has even less worth than if he were a mere thing, makes himself a mere deceptive appearance of man, not man himself. The instruction of children should aim gradually to combine knowing and doing. Among all sciences mathematics seems to be the only one of a kind to satisfy this aim most completely. The existence of the Bible is the greatest blessing which humanity ever experienced. Through laziness and cowardice a large part of mankind, even after nature has freed them from alien guidance, gladly remain immature. It is because of laziness and cowardice that it is so easy for others to usurp the role of guardians. It is so comfortable to be a minor. Nature even in chaos cannot proceed otherwise than regularly and according to order. Even philosophers will praise war as ennobling mankind, forgetting the Greek who said, war is bad and that it begets more evil than it kills. Time is not an empirical concept. For neither coexistence nor succession would be perceived by us if the representation of time did not exist as a foundation a priori. Have patience a while, slanders are not long lived. Truth is the child of time, ere long she shall appear to vindicate thee. It is by his activities and not by enjoyment that man feels he is alive. In idleness we not only feel that life is fleeting, but we also feel lifeless. But only he who, himself enlightened, is not afraid of shadows. Beneficence is a duty, and he who frequently practices it, and sees his benevolent intentions realized comes, at length, really to love him to whom he has done good. Moral teleology supplies the deficiency in physical teleology, and first establishes a theology, because the latter, if it did not borrow from the former without being observed, but were to proceed consistently, could only found a demonology, which is incapable of any definite concept. Reason must approach nature with the view, indeed, of receiving information from it, not, however, in the character of a pupil, who listens to all that his master chooses to tell him, but in that of a judge, who compels the witnesses to reply to those questions which he himself thinks fit to propose. To this single idea must the revolution be ascribed, by which, after groping in the dark for so many centuries, natural science was at length conducted into the path of certain progress. We ourselves introduced that order and regularity in the appearance which we entitle nature.